Ciao, Jewelry Making Friends. My name is Joey Balistrieri. Welcome to my work table. Today's project is going to be a little bit of playing with chain. Um, it is a multi-strand necklace and also a bar necklace. And I will show you some of the things that I will be working with. For one thing, I love to use what I have already purchased. So I have gone into my stash and I got two of these chains on clearance. They were $8.99, but they were on clearance for $2.24. And these are by Vintage and these are natural brass. So this one had this little brass clasp on it and I've taken that off. I don't think I'll be using it in this project. And then I also had this smaller vintage brass chain same price point that I just found on clearance and then this is my favorite chain if you've watched some of my other videos this has made an appearance in quite a few projects I picked this up at a bead show and I just love it in fact I'm going back to that bead show on April 27th I'm really excited I hope the seller is there again so as you'll notice, these are different colors of gold because this has an E coating on it and this has this embossed like pattern on both sides of this oval link, but it's really sparkly and shiny. And then of course the brass chain is a little bit more muted, a little bit more subdued of a gold, but I quite like mixing the golds. I'm gonna take these little these little things off and before I go any further I'm just gonna say that I have two very recent videos and I can link both of those below if you end up loving this project and would like to try it but don't have chain that you want to work with I have done two recent videos where I show how to make your own chain now this was a coordinating bracelet but the necklace that I did in this video I made my own chain and there's one right before that as well it's really easy to make your own chain so I'll link those below in case you don't have chain from your stash to work with for this and I also in this little dish I have these little bars and I also got these at the bead show from the same seller that has all of this beautiful chain all of his products have the E coating so they're anti-tarnish and I have this little cat charm and this is used to be a pair of earrings but I would never wear this as an earring so I've taken it apart and this little cat is going to be a charm I have two little magnetic clasps here and some crystals these beautiful check glass six millimeter rounds are in a color called khaki and like one side of them has that ab aurora borealis finish on it so i don't know if you can see they have a really nice flash and this is just like an odd crystal that i had in my stash i'm not sure if i'll use it but the color match was so great so i have pulled out some possibilities and in this little dish i have two sizes of gold filled spacer beads a five millimeter and a three millimeter and I can also link those below They're Amazon products they have great reviews it says they are gold filled but I'm not sure about the metal content and I really hope they don't tarnish but they do have good reviews and then these are also <laughs> rescued crystals from another project and I've just cut them apart and left my little head pin in there and they are a possibility as well i'm not sure if i'll use one or both and oddly enough these magnetic clasps are not for the closure they are going to be for kind of something cool and that's going to go at the very end of the project so my plan is to make this first chain the part that will go around my neck and then i want to have some chains hanging from the bottom of a bar and what I plan to do with these is make these little components with simple loops and so I'll just make show you how I did that really quickly I like to use 20 gauge wire for that and I am using my two and a quarter millimeter one step looper um, when I have a lot of components to make this tool just really saves my my hand from an arthritis flare-up so if you don't care for this tool I I hear 
both ways. I hear that people either love this or hate it. So if, if you don't care for this tool, you can get your simple loops in there however you need to. Your pliers work really great. So I'm going to just thread on one of those little bars and it kind of becomes a little connector bar. And I'm just going to get my loop in there. I like this tool a lot. I have a lot of control over straightening things. <laughs> I get perfect, consistent loops every time when I'm making like a project where I have to repeat. They are always the same. Let me slow down for the crystal one and show you. So I will put my wire in the tool and just slightly close it so that I'm holding on to it. And my wire is just slightly past the back jaw of the tool. And this tool will give me a nice clean blunt cut on my wire. So it's a step that I can skip with my pliers. And there is the little tiny bit of waste, not really waste at all. And then when I close the tool all the way, I'm just going to pull the wire down so that my loop is right in the middle of that wire centered. And then I can smooth and straighten if there's anything that needs to be done. And then when I take it out of the tool, I have a perfect loop. And now all I need to do is thread one of my little six millimeter beads on. I like to, through a piece, a beaded chain, have my loops going in opposite directions. Don't ask me why, it's just what I do. And so this one is curved down, the tool wraps the wire upward. But this time I will push the wire all the way through the back of the tool and just slightly close it just so that I'm holding on to it. I'm not putting a lot of pressure and I want my bead to be just a little bit away from this front jaw of the plier. So I'm going to back it out just a millimeter. You can see that little bit of space. And then when I slowly close the tool, it makes that clean cut for me. It wraps the wire around the mandrel. And then before I close the tool all the way, I am just going to pull that bead down and away from the tool. Now I can see that my loop is a slightly misaligned. So while it's still in the tool, I can take my pliers and line up those loops. And when I take it off, I have a perfect component. And since I have a few of these to do, they will all be totally consistent. But as I say, if you're not a huge fan of this tool, you can totally do this with your plier. So when you're going to start with a piece of wire and put your first loop in, instead of taking the time to use your pliers to make your blunt cut, you can just put that wire in past the back jaw of the tool and close it. It makes that little cut and you know your first loop is in there. And if I have a lot to make, I don't even put the pool tool down. I just keep it in my hand like that and I can get my components made and created really quickly. So I just like hang on to the tool, kind of swing it out of the way and just repeat, repeat, repeat. And that one was really good. So that is how I'm going to make bars and and components out of these beads. And what I plan to do, because this is only an 18, I think it was, let me see, I think it was a, they're both, both of my vintage chains were just 18 inches long. And I want to make it a little bit longer. I want it to be about 20 inches. So I think what I'm going to do, um, unfortunately, I believe these links cannot be opened. It looks like the links in this smaller chain are solid. The links in the larger chain are openable. They have a little cut there. So that is nice. I don't have to waste links if I want to add in little bead stations or components in that. So the first thing I want to do, I think, do I want to read? I haven't really decided if I want to use the clasp. I guess I'll leave the clasp on. 
I mean, I'll use this one. And I think I'm going to just kind of find the middle of this chain because this one is going to have a bar component across. So I'm just going to take, let me get a little piece of wire. So this is a nice little trick in to avoid counting links when you need to find a section of chain is just to use a piece of wire and I just hold it up but you can see that I have found the middle so that link right there is the one that I am going to cut so I'm just going to get rid of that one link and I'm also going to set these aside they're a little bit in my way <laughs> clean up my mat a little bit. So I have just cut another little length of that same 20 gauge wire and I am going to put another simple loop in one end of this wire and you could do a wrapped loop here. I consider doing a wrapped loop but I want to keep this project simple and fast and I think that a simple loop here will work just fine just tidy up this loop a little bit every now and then if I am not paying good attention I'll get my my loops a little bit offset with that tool but you know that happens even with pliers it is just the nature of making jewelry I'm just going to get this wire nice and straight and still not closed well Okay, and I am going to create a little pattern with my fire polished beads, these khaki color beads, and create a bar that will be attached across this chain. So let me try two and one of those gold filled beads. That is so pretty. I just love these these check glass six millimeter beads they're so classic and they can just go with anything I want to check and see also pay attention to the scale of what I'm doing with my chain make sure that it's not going to be you know too chunky or too tiny compared to the size of my chain and I actually think that is great and I want to get my bar to be around an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter. Um, I think I am going to add one bead right here. I want it to be a little bit longer because my design will have something added to this at the end. So I just want to make sure that I have the space for that. <laughs> Put these back on. And so that is my bar component that's going to go right there. And I'm going to come back in with my one step looper. Make sure that is just out of the jaw of the plier. That actually looks great. And so this will get attached right here to this chain. And again, I quite like mixing all of these golds. I am a fan of mixing like gold and copper and a big 2024 trend was to mix gold and silver. But I looked at this, actually I played with these chains on and off for a whole day to make sure that I liked 
the mix and I actually like even the color of my gold wire because it kind of mixes the gold of the brass and the gold of the shiny chain that I'm going to add in. So that is the beginning of my little necklace here and then I want to, before I move on, I want to add a bar up here and a component on each of these side. I think I want to add a crystal and a bar on each side. So I need to make one more of my beaded little components. Okay. And so here I will count a little bit because I have to cut my I have to cut my links. Um, so let me take my wire and let me see where I want it. I think I want my first little bead to be maybe right about there. I, there's no science to this. I'm just choosing a spot and I'll go ahead and cut this link. And that is where I will add in this little beaded component that I just made. So this is a good way to take a ready-made chain and customize it and make it look really artisan by, you know, adding in some beaded components and kind of reconfiguring the chain to look like what you want it to, you know, something that's handmade and not ready-made what I'm trying to say. So let me count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 links. So let's do the same thing on this side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 links. So I'm going to cut this one. and add in this component on this side. I also like to open and close my pliers on my loops as I close them it just work hardens them a little bit and now let's see how I want to do this do I want to add my bar right there or do I want another little section of chain I think I want another little section of chain so what I'm going to do is take three links of this chain so I'm going to cut the fourth one and I'm going to add three links right here. Open that loop. Get the end of my chain. I want to make sure those loops are closed really well as always but this chain is a little bit fine so I don't want it to come apart and then I'm going to go to one of my connector bars that I made and add that and then another three lengths of chain so I will be cutting this fourth one and add that in right here Okay, so what we have 
is looking really good it's so pretty and again I'm doing this to kind of evenly mix my different golds so the more shiny gold with the more brass gold and you know my everything will be evenly mixed and as I bring in my other two chains down here I think the piece will look cohesive and really artisan let me set this aside and let's repeat the same thing on this side turn this around and let me get my three links on this side so I'll be cutting this fourth one So this is really simple. This is, you know, the way we do pattern play with beads. I am kind of doing pattern play with chain. And, you know, it's just really pretty and it really like customizes. Uh, there is either a frog or a big bird or something on my patio. I don't know if the microphone is picking him up, but he is talking. So yeah, I really like customizing things and making it artisan and one of a kind and you know so you can easily start with a ready-made chain and with really basic skills simple loops opening and closing a jump ring you can really make something that looks anything but ready-made you know I didn't I didn't measure what this was doing to the length but I wanted it to be between 20 and 22 inches and I think it's going to be perfect. Close that one just a tiny bit more. Okay, now we're at the same length. Now we can go back to this little component that we made. I am not happy with that one. I think I'm going to redo that. It looks like my it looks like my um, wire just is a little bit longer than the other components. Let me redo this one really quickly. Every now and then I'll make a component and I'm just not happy with something with it. And I really like to do quality work, so I will stop what I'm doing and make it right before I move on. Okay, now we can add in the back part of our chain. Super easy to just take a plain <laughs> chain and make it stunning with adding just a couple of little things to it. Just beautiful. Look at that. It's just beautiful. Okay, but we're not done. That is just the first part of this necklace. So now here I want to switch to my brighter chain. So here's my plan is to do a length of this brighter chain and then beneath that this uh, brass chain that's a little bit thicker so as I said this is going to be chain play and I know it's a little bit long for my mat so what I'm going to do is pause the camera and get my links right and then we'll connect these and I'll show you as best that I can and at the end we'll go to Gabriella Eva and have her try this on because you'll be able to see how cool this design is so, so I have quite a bit of progress with my length You've already seen this part, and as I said, at the end, I'll put some pictures as well as put this on Gabriella Eva so you can see. But where the bar connects the smaller chain to the larger chain, I've done one side where I just opened these links and created a little pattern adding in the components that I made. So um, because of my design background, I kind of see things pleasingly in odd numbers so 
adding in two more bars on the bottom here when the necklace is worn with the one bar up here i'll be seeing an odd number there and there's three of these links in between each of the little sections that I added in the little stations and so what I need to do I've already made all the components and what I need to do is create that on this side and I also let's see I'm done with this and we will need these and I have some gold filled jump rings here um, I'll set those aside set that little dish aside so I also created another component with that one little single crystal that I had and my gold filled spacer beads in the two sizes and I'm not sure if I'm going to use this but I have a kind of a cool idea I've taken a length of this chain and this is going to be my middle chain here and I have another length too and since these are soldered solid links I always have to lose a link when I am you know cutting chain I can't open it the way I do this one so you know it was expensive was a little bit expensive plus I love this chain and I don't like wasting it so I had the idea of actually connecting this as a little bridge and I just have to see how it hangs but it may work beautifully and just give some interest to this center section of the necklace so that's where I'm going with that and so the cool thing about this necklace it's kind of a surprise ending on this side I have added two really large jump rings here and that is so where these chains intersect that is so I could put a smaller jump ring on the front there will be a front and a back to this with there's half of my magnet there and to this little cat charm I have added the other half of the magnet and so you just like add your little charm on and it hangs asymmetrically on the front of this necklace and with my other magnet I want to create a less whimsical charm like a more elegant crystal and gold charm that's also a little bit asymmetrical and connect that so this necklace will have optional little charms from this little magnet here and you know with magnets there is a negative and positive side so when you're doing something interchangeable like this you always have one side of the magnet left over but if you're going to do this don't throw that away because they are useful and I'll show you why but before I get to my final little dangle here I need to do this same thing on this side it's super simple so let me just show you what I did let's see one two three four five six seven rings so I'm going to open the eighth one one two three four five six seven so I'm going to open this one and a chain that you can open the links are so great because you don't really have any waste that way <laughs> and let's see let me count again one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven so right here I'm going to add one of my little beaded components that I made and connect that to the link that I opened and so I'm simply going to work my way down the length of this chain adding in those stations and just duplicating this side of the necklace so I'm adding a little bit of length but I'm also adding interest to my piece and then I did three links in between that Let's see which end opens this one's closed so well I can't see which ends I guess it's this one it's such a good quality chain and I don't know why these were on clearance but they were and I grabbed them I'm a big proponent of using what we have purchased you know I think it's just so important and not just be hoarding jewelry <laughs> supplies or keep buying supplies when you haven't used what you've already bought so I really try to go into my stash 
and take things out that I purchased that were a good deal or that I just really loved. And so that's what this project is. And I can tell you, I am already loving the way this is turning out. I think it's elegant and whimsical and clever, and I'm just really loving it. So I'm just going to continue uh, three, three little spaces, three little links, I meant to say, in between the components that I am adding in. I'm on this one. Okay, so my longest part of my chain is finished. And now I'm going to come in, these magnets just love to grab each other. Now I'm going to come in with this chain. And I also have a second piece here that is a little bit longer. And I just have to decide if I want to use the longer length. Let me see about where this would land on my design. There's no science to this. I'm just really looking at it and seeing what is pleasing to me. And I do think I want to put this as a little bridge. And I think I think I do want the longer length. I think that's going to make me happy. So I am going to connect this to Let's see, I think I'm going to connect this right to one of my brass links. I could open it, but um, I think I'm going to do a jump ring. So I have a little selection of gold filled jump rings here. Oh, I already took some out. And so I think I'm going to connect this with a jump ring right here just to the second link and you know the cool thing about a design like this is once I am finished connecting everything and I try it on or put it on my dress form on Gabriella Ava um, if I don't like the way something is hanging or I need to adjust the length you know, jump rings are super easy to open and close and make those little adjustments so that it hangs properly. Okay, I'm just going to pull out of the camera for one second. Me and my long necklaces. <laughs> my executive decision is I am going to connect this little crystal bar that I made and if I, these are simple loops, I didn't wire wrap it. So if I do not care for the way it is hanging when it's on, I can just disconnect it. That is my executive decision. So I'm going to come, let's see, right about there and connect this directly to my chain. just pull out of the camera really quickly and see oh you guys I think it's going to be just gorgeous I love it okay so the last step I already have my 
little cat charm and half my magnet so I just need to work on this one so I want these to hang not at the same height I want it to have almost that tassel look so I'm just going to do a simple loop in this one I just bent it to hold everything on here and I just added one of my little um, three millimeter spacer beads to the uh, knotted head pin that I already made and this was just salvaged from another project that I took apart and I did not want to you know <laughs> of course discard them and I left them why I left them wrapped the way that I had them in that project so I'm just going to make a simple loop here and I'm going to put a jump ring through those two like that kind of hanging asymmetrically and attach it right to half of my second magnet and then with a design like this you know I could continue to add little charms to the collection I want to turn it this way so it's hanging like that like a offset with that jump ring and I'm going to add the magnet on here oh before I do that let me see which side of this magnet is negative and positive so because I want to yeah this is the negative side so it's pushing that one away so I need the positive side <laughs> there we go <laughs> magnets are a little bit of a pain because they grab on to jewelry tools and things like that but um, it's also really cool so you have to be see you just have to kind of be patient and get in there with your pliers and then like I said you want to save your other magnet because you may find a use for that so this is like my second choice of a dangle like a little asymmetrical tassel on this necklace and i'll put these on my mannequin and we'll go we'll go look how strong these magnets are like they are really strong so you know i could order some more of these little magnets i believe i got these from art beads let me see if i have the thing in my tray i do this is the um, clasp 0675. This is artbeads.com. You can take a screenshot if you don't have magnets like this in your supplies and it's something you're interested in. They're really small and really powerful. They make great bracelet uh, um, clasps as well. Uh, but for a charm holder like this, this is so cool because I have this more elegant version with this very sweet little dangle asymmetrically off one side of my bar and then I have a more whimsical fun version with my little cat charm which also this was an earring so this was a pair of earrings and I thought they were adorable but I probably would never wear a cat earring like that so this project is chain from my stash that I got on clearance it is rescued crystals from a cut apart necklace it is earrings that were taken apart and leftover check glass beads these were a craft store item from I don't even know how long ago and I had just a few left over and they're just such a pretty neutral color and so really I just like made it pulled it all together to make a really cool piece so I am super excited about this project I mean I just love the way that this turned out and so I will put some pictures at the end of the video and show you how this is hanging on Gabriella Eva and I hope that you all got some inspiration from this or picked up a little tip or a technique and I thank you so much for watching if you have not subscribed to my channel it really helps support my work and also if you tap the bell notification so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos and even a thumbs up 
you know, or share it with somebody, all of that really helps my YouTube channel, helps the algorithm, and really is a great way to support my work, and it doesn't cost you anything or obligate you to anything. So I thank you so much for that. I'll put links to anything that I think you might be interested in that I've shown today in the description box. I work kind of hard on those boxes, so they're easy access for all of you. And again, I thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope everybody is safe and well and having fun on their beading mats. Ciao, jewelry making friends.